there and welcome to this episode of Today's Parent where we connect you with experts and help you have conversations with your child that probably you are struggling with. Today's episode is going to be a bit different and very interesting. Can I ask you a question? Is your teenager having sex? Yes? No? Today we are going to find ways to have this conversation with our teens and we have a very special person in studio, family therapist. Rahab Jinu. Rahab, yes. how are you? Thank you very much. You know, this is a conversation that most parents want to have, mm. and it's a blessing to have you in studio today. I want to start with a question. Yes. Do you know a guy called Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber. Yes, no? No. <laughs> no. Kimia, Do you I know of a small girl called uh, Billie Eilish? Billie Eilish? Yes. Yeah, Linia. <laughs> and then, you know, the point where I'm going with this point is that we normally feel, especially now that we've been on this earth for very long, mm -hmm. that we are with it, we are switched on, and we are not even getting old. Mm -hmm. So my young one is um, around 11. He comes home with all these different songs and ideas, and I'm wondering, what are these kids listening to? Yes. So the other day, I was listening to something that apparently is an ad. And it's, it is such a catchy song. It says, Chukua Selfie. So for me, I thought the song is about taking a selfie. So apparently the song is about, you know, it's a home, a home kit where you can check your HIV status. Wow. Which I also didn't know. So that means most likely our teens are having sex because we've preached abstinence for so long, mm -hmm. but probably research backs it up that yes. our teens are having sex. But you are the expert. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> wow. I'll speak from uh, a point of uh, therapies, mm. which I do with the teens. And uh, unfortunately, I'll say what many parents would not like to hear. Right. It is true. Teens are in sex. And when we are talking about sex, uh, maybe this is a quite of a quoted one. Yeah. Because it's like they are in the sexual intercourse acts. Hmm. And I think that is what we know. Because when we say sex is about you a girl, I'm a girl. That's all. But when we come to teenagers, they have their own terms, they have their own things, they do really? behind the cutting, yes. Enlighten us. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, as I was saying before, mm -hmm. it uh, disheartens my heart. And it's a bit like absurd to know that many parents will struggle with the teenagers yeah. because of what they are portraying be before their eyes. Mm. And uh, they are thinking, he's not working hard enough in school. He's having a strange relationship with other boys and mm. other girls. But behind it, they don't know there is an underlying issue of they have already discovered who, who they are, what they are, before the parent can even come in. So the parent has been dropped outside. The teenager is in her own life. Hmm. Or he or, he's on her own life. That okay. Is, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So for this awkward conversation, for mm -hmm. a lot of parents, especially African parents, mm -hmm. When is it a good time to start talking about sex? Well, a good question. Uh, the, the, let me say there is no good or bad time. Mm. It depends on how you have uh, developed with your child. Right. One, for a parent to be a parent, you start at zero when you give birth. In fact, when you go down, 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 it starts when you get pregnant. Immediately <laughs> after conceiving, you start preparing. To yeah. parent. So after the child is born, when the child can communicate, this is the time to know what does he or she know about his body. Because when you talk about sex, it's my body. You're talking about my body. So that is how you bring in the topic of human sexuality and matters human sexuality. Yes. Okay. It starts when your child portrays that I understand some things. You see, like the song you heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a parent, when you discover something new, and this you discover because you know me. Mm -hmm. If you don't know me, Christine, you will not know anything new. That is I'm true. just an ordinary That's person. True. That's true. So if the parent has had a walk with the child, they have been discovering together, the discovery will happen outside in the marketplace. Because this is where others are, that is socially. Then I'll bring home what I've picked from the others. I see where it's, you are, we are coming from with this, where you're going with this conversation. So you, you're saying we need to nurture that relationship from when they are small. Yes. And work with them this journey up until their teens, that we have some form of relationship. relationship. Yes. 
in, in, in fact, we call it interactional relationship. It's not just being fair with you because we can see it. Like mm. here we can sit and do nothing, but we are doing something. It's yeah. like we are confessing. So that kind of a relationship, it's like, wow, this is new. Teach me. And the <laughs> child will teach you. With the time, uh, at around seven years, they discover, they start using the abstract. The, the cognitive or the thoughts can now go wild, a bit wider. And they can come and say, this is pink, this is white, I yeah. like black. Yeah. So they are able, now this is the time now to discuss so you Other get to issues. know them better. Yes. You get to know them better. Mm, they are thinking, they are feeling, and they are doing. You know, speaking about doing, and I won't ask you what they're doing, doing, mm -hmm. but as a family therapist, yes. what is the perception of our teens about sex? What are they telling you they understand what sex is? Uh, unfortunately, they are not going to details because they have already known how to block you out as mm, an adult mm, because it's their world. Mm. The world of teens is a whole world affair. It must be. It's a not a different Kenyan. world. Yeah, it's their different world. It's like you you had all this. You had put me in a cocoon of do's and don'ts. Yeah. Now I can also okay. say what I want and you this to is do. What I'm going to do. Yes, because that is their task at that position. Right. And in the teenage, this is when you learn how to talk, you learn how to say, this is my body, yeah. this is the color, this is how I want to hear things. So they are like pushing you a bit. So if you have not known me very well and I'm, an, now, I'm a teen, yeah. I'll push you. So in this generation, mm -hmm. uh, Rehab, do you think we can still preach abstinence? Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Let me say in therapists, I've seen uh, teens who are very abstaining, mm. they, they have nothing to do with that, but they know their body. They know the reason for sex, and they know the disadvantage and the advantages. Right. Meaning somebody has walked with them somewhere. Others are like their discovery in right their now. own world. Yeah, and I think I would be a bit scared of the ones who are discovering, yeah. having not spoken to the parent yeah. or the, to the caregiver. Okay. Because they are the ones now who will go and they don't know the disadvantage. They don't know the impact. Mm -hmm. They don't know the pregnancies. And the parents are so much scared about the pregnancies. Yeah. I would be scared about the diseases. You know, by the way, somebody said, mm -hmm. even for our girls right now, mm -hmm. they're more scared about getting pregnant than getting diseases. Yeah, they are. I've had interaction in another dimension mm -hmm. where girls are looking for kids. They are looking for P2. Really? Yeah, and it's like you and as an adult engage them to ask what are the P2 for? Now, even the other adult, because we need to parent together. Don't imagine you parent the 11 year old all yeah. alone. Yeah. The teacher is there, the yeah. neighbor is there, yeah. your aunties are there. If every adult would be concerned, then it would be like it would be safe for them. Mm -hmm. It's like the P2 for what purpose? And when I see you doing it twice or thrice, I'll be like, Christine. Ah, uh, what about other diseases? Yeah. You are scared about the baby? What about the diseases? And then it's like, you are rem I'm reminding you, there are other things. You know, Rehab, maybe you need to break it down for parents who are watching who have no idea what P2 is. Mm -hmm. What oh. is P2? <laughs> <laughs> they call it uh, the morning after. Yeah. I think that's the An emergency argument. contraceptive. In, uh, yeah, an emergency contraceptive, where, whereby, unfortunately, even men are buying for girls. The P2. That is where we are in our country. So it's like, where are you as a parent? Have you walked with me? That's or tough. I'm alone discovering? That's tough. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Rehab. Mm -hmm. Who should talk to the teen about uh, sex? The mother or the father? Or both? Wow. Christina, uh, I don't want to ask you the question. Let me <laughs> demystify. <laughs> but I'm wondering, who is the parent anyway? Both of us are the parent, mm -hmm. but... Some of us tend to feel if it's a boy, it's easier for the father to talk mm -hmm. to the boy about sex. And yes. if it's a girl, of course, it's easier for the mother mm -hmm. to talk to the girl about sex. I don't know in your experience what you can advise us. Wow, wow. It is like the mothers are doing everything, really? which is okay, which is okay. There are those fathers, some. I will say some because mm. there are others who are so much mm. into the children. But mostly mothers do. But what is the normal? any parent can do, because you already know, you've been there, yeah. it is, it's your duplicate in the smallness. Yeah. So hold my heart, whether a father or a mother, anyone can speak about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, 
if a parent was watching right now and they're wondering, mm -hmm. how can I tell my teen is having sex? Are there mm -hmm. any signs that we can look out for? Which ties to the question that has been sent by, by Lydia on our SMS number 22999. Mm -hmm. She's saying, I am saved, but I suspect my 15-year-old has had sex. What can mm -hmm. I do? Two different issues, but wow. Wow. those are the things parents are going through. One, uh, a parent who has not walked the walk with mm. the child might not, I'll not say will not, but might not know when the change comes. And as I said, if you don't know me, you do not know when I change. Mm. Uh, some of the behaviors would include, because for them that are maybe walking and not discovering, will include maybe putting, uh, locking myself in the bedroom, not having a lot to do with you the way we used to be. Because even when we are together, hmm. I can still discover sex. That even if true. we have walked it together, it's my life. That's true. And I'm a teenager among the teenagers, right? Mm. So I might discover. But how would you know? One, there are symptoms that are obvious. If I don't want it to be open with you so much, again, it's like you need to question. But how, Rehab, how do I separate that, that maybe now that I've become a teenager, mm -hmm. I've become so self-conscious, I'm now an introvert, which is possibly a stage some of them go through that they just become withdrawn, and maybe they're not having sex. If I don't are, know if they're having drugs, but... <laughs> or they are taking care of themselves, because they have grown. Mm. I have discovered, I have things like mom, yeah. or like dad, so I can keep to myself. They don't come disturbing everybody. But when, uh, when it is too much, mm. if you are good, if you are a parent who is concerned, who has worked with me as a teenager, you will have a leeway of asking, what is happening? The friendship is no longer there. If there is nothing to hide, the child will say, mom, I'm just, I'm okay, you know? Yeah. And you will be like engaging in other areas so that you see whether it is true, it's okay. Yeah. Is she talking much about the girls, if she's a girl, or men, if she's a, he's a man? Yeah. So it's like, if you have a relationship, you can ask the question safely. If you do not have a relationship, they'll count you as brudosing them. And this is when the children give their mothers weird names mm. and the fathers mm. dangerous names. You know those ones of <laughs> terrorists. Ter 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 the terrorists. <laughs> the invited for women. They are called funny, funny. Children will say even. Oh my The gosh. witch. The witch is coming. Yeah, meaning they do not know you. But if it's their own way of exploring the world safely, even if you are given a name, it's not that dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Do we then wait for our kids, our teens to come and tell us that mom, dad, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend, then you start suspecting that possibly it could be happening. So what you're saying, it is not possible for you to have like a generic sign mm -hmm. which you can use to tell that your teen is definitely having sex. Not one. No. Not one. No. Yeah. But remember they are also thinking. And I said this is a time for abstract thinking. They can think why then they bring it in early, the danger. Yeah. So they will not communicate everything. Yeah. But if you are, you are a friend to the teen, to your child, then there is a possibility of entering the life and getting out. Uh, don't don't hover. Don't become a, they call it helicopter. Yes, a don't, helicopter don't, parent. Yeah, don't hover. It's like you can enter, mm. then you leave me safe, and you are safe. So it's like you are guiding and mentoring. Mm. Yeah. I hear you. So let's take a short break and then we continue when we come back. Right. And in the next part is going to be exciting because you're going to share with our parents how to talk about sex with their teens. Wow. On today's episode, we have Rehab, who is a family therapist, sharing with us how we can have this awkward conversation on matter sex. And on this next segment, we are going to talk about how you can talk to your teen about sex. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this episode of Today's Parent where we are empowering you on how you can talk to your teen about sex. And we are in studio with family therapist Rehab who is going to share with us now how we can talk to our teens about sex. And that is the hardest part. So where do we start from? How do you do well, it? Well, let me say, first of all, uh, there is that concern of when did they learn about it? because there is also a whole topic of sexuality hmm. in primary school. 
And I think it's taught at class six. Class six. Yes. So in school already so at by class six, they already start they, they having already that an discussion. idea. And there's also the anatomy of a the human, human anatomy. Yeah. I remember that one. And I think I would be concerned two years before. That should be parent, in class four. Yes. I don't know what grade is that in CBC, but yes. That <laughs> <laughs> is class four in the ordinary uh, education, the Kenyanese child. Mm. And I think this is the right time to start the work. Remember, we have been working together, discovering many things together, discussing, ask, asking this song is about what, yeah, what yeah. does it mean, what is this? Yes. It just know, know it from the child. Don't, don't put it. Mm. Know what they know, and then you bring up what they do not know. So in this case in class, maybe class four, a parent need to have the ability or the stamina to overcome the taboos. Because now, again, sex is a taboo. To overcome the taboos, but bring the whole sexuality aboard, because sex is a part of the discoveries of sexuality. Yeah. It's like, I've seen this in my body. I've changed. Hmm. So what, what is does happening? it mean? What yeah. is happening? Mm -hmm. This is the right time to bring the whole sexuality aboard. Because if you come with the sex, the child will be wondering, which is sex? I just remember that my, my young boy, mm -hmm. one day came home and he was talking about something to do with bad manners. So when I asked him, what is bad manners? What do you understand by that term? So he said, like we went to somebody's house and then somebody touched something they were not supposed to touch. Mm -hmm. That is bad manners. Or I, somebody borrowed something and then they didn't return it, that is bad manners. Mm -hmm. Or somebody in school talked badly to another person, that mm -hmm. is bad manners. So for my 11-year-old, I found it very hard to have that conversation because I felt he was not ready. Yeah. So, so many parents would also be stuck, mm. I can imagine. And again, I'm wondering, even as I listen to you, because we said we need a connection early, where the word bad manners was around. I have no idea. So suppose now we look at a parent who, <laughs> I'm not saying you are that parent, but you can, you can maybe think about it. Like, who taught you about the bad manners yourself? Where did you ah, hear the word? That is where I should have started from. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Because it's like you, you learned from home, from mm. maybe parent or an auntie. I, I'm imagining you came from a big yes. maybe family. Yes. Whereby when you do something, when you behaved like... You were lifting the dress, the auntie is there, that is bad manners, mm -hmm. funika, funikia mwili, you know? Mm -hmm. So at least you knew there was something special that you were covering. Yeah. So w what about this boy who did not learn? About that is special, maybe. Yeah. Maybe there is that learning, but in a different language altogether. That's true. So for him, bad manners is touching, touching, yeah. which I imagine you have done it in the house, yeah. introducing don't touch. Mm -hmm. And you even hit them when they are very young, mikono. So in this case, it's a good thing to start with. Are there other bad manners? Or maybe when you are looking at the body of the individual at, at standard four, maybe yeah. early, yeah. before the teacher comes in, the parent needs to have introduced the body parts. Because how so did they know? it's not the work know? of the parents. How did it's not the work know? of the teachers. It's not the work mm -mm. of the teachers. It's the work of parents. Who taught your son that he has ears? That's a and good question. Knows, you we, get? Ne we never even ask them because they just figure out they have body parts or something. Isn't it? Sometimes people do. Wait, in when school, head, shoulder, knees and toes, school. Even at home, you know when the, the toddler is yes, walking around small, trying to... Yes, it's right. like macho. Right. I've seen parents. Yes, and, right. and then sometimes you're showed mapua. mapua. <laughs> you, meaning, yes. meaning there's something you brought, but you left some other parts of the ah. body. So it's also the responsibility of the parent to start adding, introduce, even as you are bathing the child, when they can now think and touch, touch things, when they are concentrating, because they really concentrate on that area. So what do you tell them? You ask them, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, and then when they are able to understand, and I said that around seven years, mm. the, the child will know what is this. They mm. know they are not, they also go to school. Mm. They don't go to the same toilet. Boys and girls, go to they are separate. separate. And they know that they have different body parts. They are also praying father and mother. So at the time of juncture of praying father and mother when they are together with the others, the neighborhood, unfortunately, in Nairobi we have decided they will not go out. So it's you and them. In the house. In the house. God forbid they're playing in the bedroom. So, yeah, and they will bring, John will bring Janet. 
to their bedroom. They are praying, hide and seek. You know what I thank God is most of the time in mother and father I was always the house girl. I don't know why I was oh. <laughs> Maybe you we know, cha mama and cha baba was always a house girl. I don't know why. Then how do we replace mm. the father and the mother? Because others are learning the true father and mother. Mm. Maybe in your compound you are just uh, a, a, a gated community. Mm. A gated, An gated, No, gated family. A gated, gated, gated family. Community. <laughs> because community, they can interact with the others. And then you observe when they are praying mother and father. What is the, who is the father? It's the boy. Meaning they know. They have already discovered. This is the right time to ask, how does a father look like? What is different between, between a mother, a, and, a a mother and a father? And I, I, maybe this is a good juncture. And I may say this, Christine, I've seen it a milestone when the parents bring their children or when they even consult with me. Mm. It's like my children are now teenagers. I don't mm. know what to do with them. I can't talk to them. I don't know what they are doing. Mm. And then it's like, bring their children. Let me talk to the children. When they come home, they mm. look for you. Okay. Because those things you left out, because like some people have already children who are in school, they are teenagers, they have yeah. never spoken. So how do you start? So how do you bridge the gap from, you know, from your 11-year-old to your now proper teen? Mm -hmm. How can we do that? Bridging now that we didn't, how, how we didn't, now that we didn't talk to them about matter sex then and sexuality, mm -hmm. how can we catch up now and have that conversation? They are still your children. If, if the child was 11 and is now 15, it's still your child. So the discussion is look at the entry point. Look for an entry point. What is a good entry point? You can go out together, mm. just having a walk and seeing other people around and wondering the age, wondering what do they do. Mm. I'm sure you'll even find some coupling. Yeah. The ones who are not teenagers, I hope. Yeah. And when you find the ones who are teenagers, when you are walking in the park, in the park, it does not mean in the national park or no, wherever. No. Somewhere where you are getting people. You can then wonder, what does that mean to you? By the way, do you have a relationship? So that is what you can ask your teen? Yes. Do you have a relationship? And most of the time they will say? Some will say no. Others <laughs> will laugh at you. <laughs> and how do you continue from there as a parent? You, you say you are wondering. And then you bring the knowledge home. You wonder whether they know some of the advantages and disadvantages. So what do we need to be telling our teens about the advantages of having sex, uh, if at all? One, I will not go to the advantage because mm. I, if I, as a child psychologist, I will be scared mm. because of the brain. One, the brain develops up to 19. This is when it stops sending messages of this can grow, this can develop. Yeah. You are, you, your body is not full, and this is when the sexual organs mature. So that discussion will not go towards sex. It will be like, is it dangerous? Would you look at the dangers? Is it good? By the way, it's not good to tell children sex is bad. It's about telling them when sex is bad. Their ah. brain is not mature. So if there is, and uh, maybe this, I don't know whether this is for this, the, there's a bit family therapy kind of <laughs> in the sex there is that strange invention of, it's like you are putting some force mm. into the brain. Mm. The mental and the feelings are affected. The body is also affected if it is not fully formed. Because I'll only talk about the fully formed body at 19 and onwards. Right. So if it is below, if you are a teenager, then what do you need to know about your body so that you can decide, is this the route I want? And there's nobody or nothing as caring as dealing with a teenager who is um, with sex addicted. Wow. It is a disease. It is a disease like drug and abuse. Mm. And uh, it is hard. It's not easy. So and we remember it's on your teens. body. We even have our teens addicted to sex. Severo. Severo. They'll just say, naenda apa, naenda apa. And I'm not saying mm. I'm going here. That mm. means they start, but you need to be careful what you're dealing with. Because if they enter there, you need to remove, help them come to the normalcy of wait until you are. Yeah. And I'm wondering also whether parents are able to bring in the issue of when do you, when is the right time to get married? Because one, teen marriages, <laughs> uh, those are the things we are yeah. hearing, the depression. Yeah the abuse, the what, because they are like struggling with other things yeah. in their brains, but you are thinking it's about marriage. Mm -mm. What is marriage to them? 
And then maybe as a parent, you set to the limit. It's like, from this age, maybe we can discuss some of these other issues. But you bring in the, the, the negativity of the sex mm -hmm. and maybe the importance, because it is important for giving birth. I think it's important because we have to find a way to demystify sex because it is a good and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to get to a point where our teens appreciate the same. Because, you know, these care tactics, I don't think in the long term they work. Because some of us growing up, I remember, you know, there was one channel and then the, I think maybe the government commissioned it, they would bring a tape mm -hmm. that they would show how AIDS, you know, how you, you get AIDS. So all of us in that space, we were thinking, if you have sex, you're going to get AIDS. AIDS. Mm -hmm. So the fear of sex was totally real. But I don't think it worked for long because eventually I saw a few of my, my girlfriends in the neighborhood. They were pregnant before they went to high school. This is the time for discoveries. We like it or not, teenage is a challenging moment for parents and for the owners as well. The yeah. teenagers are also yeah. challenged. Because we are moving from childhood you are suspended in the middle. That's you are true. going to adulthood. That's true. So who needs to hold the teenagers hard so that they don't lose it? <laughs> Becoming an adult is not bad. No. Let us help them to develop towards being the adult that you want to become. There you go. Yeah. And talking about helping them rehab as you're winding up, mm -hmm. your top tips when it comes to talking to your teen about sex, what pointers can you leave with our parents? Wow. One, mm -hmm. know your child. From no, a zero and zero age, have a walk. It's a relationship, and it's not ending, by the way. Even uh, in adulthood and after, parent is a parent all the time. Mm -hmm. So as much as you are nurturing, also look at other areas of life that you need to educate them. Let them appreciate their bodies. It's good to grow to be an adult. It's good to have a wife and a husband. Yeah. It's good to have children. But how do we get to them? How do we get to there? There are some tasks to be negotiated. I think as a parent, I would be bothered and concerned about, yeah. do you know yourself? Mm. Do you know what is happening around you? Do you know what you want to become? And that way the parent becomes the first friend. Yeah. Before the teacher talks about the anatomy, I'll have explored the anatomy <laughs> at home. All right. Yeah. Any other pointer? Uh, the other pointer is that uh, parents need not to fear their teens mm. because several... <laughs> they are like learning away. Yeah. You cannot afford to bring a child on earth and then you move away. You are still the map holder for the child. So it's like you are holding the map. We are going this route. They may die, die fast, kid yeah. Yeah. but when you are still there, you are still waiting. And if God has not given up on us, we should even up as our adults, children. should we give up on our children? No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Thank you, Rehab. Thank you so much. Karibu. And on that note, we come to the end of today's episode of Today's Parent where we taught you how you can talk to your teen about sex. I know you've gotten a pointer or two and I hope as a parent of a teen, this is going to be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. If you have any topic that you want us to cover on matters teenagers, please send us an SMS on 22999 and we'll see how we can cover it on another episode. I have been your host, Christine Casina, and this has been Today's Parent, and we thank you so much for your time. If you're looking for parenting resources, go to www.supermamas.co.ke. Have a wonderful day, and as Rehab has said, let us not give up on our teens.